Welcome back to Heritage Focus. Today we're looking at the Pentax 645 75mm f2.8 on the Fuji GFX 50R. This lens would be considered a normal lens, meaning it's roughly equivalent to a 50mm lens in full frame terms. There are three different versions of this lens. The first two were introduced in 1984 along with a Pentax 645 camera. The most common version is the generic A lens, which we'll look at today. There was also an LS version, which was a leaf shutter variant that could sync flashes up to 1 500th of a second. Both of these lenses are considered A lenses, which confusingly enough indicates that they are manual focus lenses. In 1997, Pentax updated the 645 line with autofocus, releasing the 645N camera along with autofocus lenses. The FA in the 645 system denotes autofocus. The FA version is still in production and is a native lens for the digital Pentax 645Z camera. All versions of the lens are optically the same. The lens design consists of six elements in five groups and it has an eight bladed aperture. The lens coating is Pentax SMC, which stands for Super Multi Coating. The version we're using today is the A version for 645 mount. As this is not a native Fuji GFX lens, we'll use a Kipon 645 to GFX adapter. The lens weighs 242 grams. The adapter weighs 226 grams. The combined weight is 468 grams. This lens is a manual focus lens with full aperture control on the side. The aperture range is from f2.8 to f22. The focus throw is roughly 180 degrees. The lens is not an internal focus design. It does get slightly longer or shorter by about 3 quarters of an inch or 18 millimeters as the focus changes. At its longest extension, the lens measures 2.9 inches or 74 millimeters in length. In its shortest state, the lens is about 2 and a quarter inches or 57 millimeters. The adapter adds 3 inches, so the fully adapted lens has a maximum length of 5.9 inches or 150 millimeters. The lens accepts 58 millimeter filters. The minimum focus distance of the lens is 2 feet or 60 centimeters. This is what the fully adapted lens looks like on the GFX 50R camera. Lens availability is good, and it should be easily available across multiple sites. KEH was the only premium used lens source with copies available. Let's take a look at some sample images and see how the lens performs on the Fuji GFX 50R. YouTube will surely compress these images, so remember that the full resolution images are always available to download at heritagefocus.org. Typically, we would review the vignetting of the lens against the medium format sensor. However, since this is a native medium format lens, vignette is not a problem and it's not a function of adapting the lens to any digital medium format system. There is no need to use a 35mm or crop mode with this lens. Bokeh is a strength of this lens. I consider it very good. It has a nice gentle fall off and there is no cat's eye or onion ring bokeh to be found. The bokeh may be considered busy by some, but I think it strikes a nice balance here. Out of focus specular highlights are rendered very delicately. The lens has excellent flare control and is really very gentle in handling direct sun shots. Chromatic aberration is very well controlled on this lens. You can see some veiling flare with bright light sources just out of frame, but this is easily corrected in post with additional contrast as I demonstrate here. Since this lens was designed for a film plane that was larger than the 44 by 33 medium format sensor, we're getting a center crop of an already very good lens. Detail is fantastic, as is micro contrast. Overall resolution of the GFX sensor is impressive. It doesn't resolve quite as much as the modern GFX lenses, but it is in the same ballpark. Corner sharpness is very good. Paired with the GFX 50 megapixel sensor, the colors this lens provides are stunning. 
Tonal transitions are gentle, and the color rendition is more modern, not overly vintage as some lenses of the era can seem to provide. The Pentax SMC coatings here are probably one reason for this, and they perform very well. Now it's time for the HTSA. The HTSA is our patent pending, heritage focused, highly technical, subjective analysis. This is where I assign quantitative values to specific lens characteristics based on absolutely no scientific measurements whatsoever and based solely on my experience and personal opinion. This HTSA is brought to you by no one because I don't have any sponsors. Company. Insert tagline here. When it comes to bokeh, I rated it a 9 out of 10. It's possibly one of my favorite lenses for bokeh. Color is another strong suit, receiving 9 out of 10. Character is a step back from modern optics, but not as far back as, say, a Helios 44. 8 out of 10. Flare control is amazing. SMC coatings here rival the best from Zeiss and Leica. 9 out of 10. Size is great. This is one of the smallest lenses for any medium format system. 9 out of 10. Weight is good by medium format standards, but nothing special. It weighs the same as a Summilux M 50mm, 8 out of 10. Price is probably the best part of this lens. It's a hidden gem, and hopefully it remains affordable, 10 out of 10. That's it for the Pentax 645 75mm f2.8. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the content and found it useful, please do the thing and the other thing. Do you have a favorite adapted lens you use, regardless of which camera system? I'd love to hear about it in the comments. Maybe we'll feature it next. Thank you again for watching Heritage Focus. Remember that you can always download the full resolution samples of the images shared today at heritagefocus.org.